In this video, we're going to look at the various symbols and notation you need to become familiar with in order to write and interpret Boolean algebra when solving logic problems. Computers use binary for calculations and logic. Binary values can represent whether a statement is either true or false. For example, a equals 6 is a statement that will either be true or false. One of the main reasons for using binary is it's easy to build electronic circuits with just two states. It is also easier to store data with two states. For example, RAM, voltage or no voltage, hard disks, polarity, and optical storage with pits and LANs, and we covered this in a previous video. When a state is either true or false, it is known as Boolean, named after George Boole, who proposed an approach to logic known as Boolean algebra. Computer circuitry is built using this Boolean logic and logic gates. In Boolean logic, an input or variable is either 0 or 1. Inputs are assigned letters to represent them, such as A, B, or C. And depending on the logic applied, the output will also be 0 or 1. To define problems using Boolean algebra, we use special symbols that make expressions easier to write. So let's have a look at those symbols now. So the first is not. This is negation. It effectively reverses the input. So if A is 0, the output becomes 1. If A is 1, the output becomes 0. For AQA, the notation for not on negation is represented by a horizontal line over the part of the expression that's being knotted. Now, in this video, we're going to be showing you in the second column, that's the white column there on the left, the symbol which AQA will be using. In the second to last column, that's the grey column on the right, you'll see other accepted standard notations. Now this is where it can get confusing. There is not a single set of notations for expressing things such as not and an or in Boolean algebra. So we'll show you some variations, but the one you see in the exam is the one shown on the left. The next Boolean expression to look at is AND. This is known as conjunction. So what happens here is we have two inputs to an AND statement, and if A and B are both one, then the output is one. In all other situations, the output is zero. AND is represented by a small circle or a dot. Next we have OR or disjunction. Again, two inputs, and if either input A or B are 1, then the output is 1, otherwise the output is 0. OR is represented by the plus symbol. Again, in the second to last column you see variations of the OR symbol, and on the far right hand side, you see some examples of how the expression can then be used. The one in purple is the one using the symbol AQA will use in the exam. Next, we have XOR or exclusive disjunction. Now, this is quite similar to OR with a subtle difference. Again, we have two inputs, and if either A or B are one, but not the other, then the output is one. So that's the difference. With OR, a could be 1, B could be 1, or both A and B can be 1. In all those situations, the output's 1. But with an exclusive OR, A has to be 1 and B 0, or B has to be 1 and A 0. They can't both be 1. And this is represented by the plus symbol again, but this time in a circle. We also have the NAND operator. Now this is a type of universal gate, because as we'll see in other videos, all other gates and their logic can actually be made up by a set of NAND gates. This is NOT AND. 
So what happens here is if A and B are 1, the output is 0. It's the opposite of an AND gate. And this is represented by a vertical line. We then have NOR, which is NOT OR. So again, this is the opposite of an OR gate. If A and B are 0, the output is 1. In all other situations, the output is 0. And this is represented by a V symbol. You'll also see in Boolean expressions three horizontal lines close together. This means equivalence or the same as. So when you see this symbol, you could be writing something as A is equivalent or the same as B. And we use these three lines. You need to be familiar with these symbols for your exams. So you can interpret Boolean expressions that contain them and also write and define Boolean expressions using them. Using this notation, it's possible to quickly build and write complex expressions in a very compact way. We can also use brackets to group various parts of the expression. And we've shown you some examples on the screen here. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean by Boolean logic and how can we use it to define Boolean problems? Thank you.